so uh, let's inquire about the state of stress at a point okay so for that let's take a member which is subjected to a tensile force f and i uh, you can see that the intuitively the stress remains same throughout the uh, uh, this member okay what i do is that i take an arbitrary plane which is perpendicular to this tensile axis uh, and i may make a cut and i divide this member into two parts now i draw a free body diagram of the first part where you can see the top face is experiencing the force f and bottom should also experience the force f uh, similarly if i draw a second member second part of this member you can see that uh, this cut plane should also experience the force f okay and the bottom force which is uh, uh, bottom part of this uh, second member also should experience force f now you can see that uh, you can see that at this at this point uh, at this plane okay so if this is the same plane so it is experiencing uh, uh, when i consider this part of this uh, thing it is it is considering that in, uh, it is going downward whereas when i am considering the second part it is going upward okay so this has to maintain a uh, body in equilibrium okay now let's understand the state of stress uh, at a point so i assume a very small element here okay uh, let's say uh, this element okay let's say this element so this element uh, uh, this element has uh, area let's say delta a okay so what will be the force acting on this uh, i reduce it proportionality to uh, proportionally to delta f okay so as the stress remains constant so i define stress at this point or this element as uh, sigma uh, delta f upon delta a now to be more precise i can say that when i want uh, stress at a point i can say that this delta a tends to zero and i define the stress as limit delta a tends to zero delta f upon delta a so in this situation your stress remains constant okay uh, but that may not be necessarily true always okay so let's understand this using another example uh, let's understand this member which has a variable cross section area also subjected to a tensile force f okay so we have an area a not at this uh, end and a2 at uh, the middle okay so you can see that the area the cross section area is decreasing okay so the stress uh, will be sigma naught is equal to f upon a naught and uh, the stress at a2 will i write it as sigma 2 upon sigma 2 is equal to f upon a2 in general i can write sigma i is equal to f upon ai now you can see that as the area is decreasing the stress is increasing okay so you can say that the change in shape or cross section may lead to change in the state of uh, stress at any point now if i consider small elements over here the state of stress will be uh, totally different so this is we have seen that if we change the shape or cross section of sample uh, the change there will be change in state of stress now let's understand this in more general way so let's take a general case uh, let's take this body which is acted upon by different forces f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 and this body is in an equilibrium okay so now i want to find out state of stress at point o i mark it over here and what i do is that i take a plane uh, which is passing through this point o and is cutting this sample into two part okay so you get this plane and it make a free body diagram so i have this free body diagram at the first part where the force f1 f2 are, are acting now as i mentioned you that this uh, uh, this body is in uh, equilibrium okay so you should replace this f3 f4 f5 by a resultant force i call it as traction okay which is acting on this uh, on this surface cut plane and at point o so this force traction acts in a way where you have 
you it maintains the equilibrium uh, so what is an equilibrium here it is like given by summation of forces should be equal to zero and summation of moments also should be equal to zero so why is it necessary summation of forces that the body should not accelerate or summation of moments equal to zero as body should not rotate also so it's it maintains maintains a static equilibrium now if if i consider a small uh, area over here on this plane okay i consider this small area at point o which has area delta a so what will be the stress i define here i define a stress similar uh, to what i have mentioned that sigma is equal to delta f upon delta a so uh, this stress can be vary if i consider a different plane okay which is cutting uh, this body but passing through this point o okay so let's understand more in detail the state of stress at a point i take this first scenario where i have this plane black pen which is passing through point o and cutting this body into two i can do it in another fashion such as i take this yellow plane which is passing through point o but uh, uh, at certain different angle so to maintain this body in equilibrium i need another traction force which is acting at point uh, o so what has happened like if i want to say a state of stress at point o uh, i have to define a plane okay i have to define a plane uh, which is uh, which is making this cut so the stress changes with orientation of the cutting plane this is what we have seen or uh, the state of stress also can be changed uh, if i change my coordinate axis so let's say if my coordinate axis are in this fashion uh, it will it will give you value of state of stress at this point o uh, will change if i change the orientation of this or if i change another coordinate axis so the stress changes with orientation or change in the reference coordinate axis uh, now uh, for our convenience we don't want to define stress at some arbitrary angle okay so what is that mean that let's say if i have a plane and if i have point o over here so i don't define something like force acting on this plane uh, in with making some angle okay say alpha i don't define like this we want to we want uh, we want this uh, this is for our convenience okay so we resolve this force acting on this plane into uh, components which are perpendicular to this plane and parallel to this plane so that makes our life easy so we resolve this part uh, into uh, two components which is acting perpendicular and parallel to this plane plane of interest so so this is what i mentioned the stress defined on per per perpendicular to the cut surface and parallel to the cut surface this is for our convenience so let's state, say let's understand the state of stress at point uh, using this concept so i have uh, my interested plane which has area delta a and uh, point o where i would like to find out what is the state of stress so let's say a force uh, let's i uh, let's say i define my coordinate axis in this fashion okay and then uh, let's say a force delta f which is acting on this uh, cut surface and, and at point o this can be a traction over here so uh, i mentioned earlier that we don't define an ar uh, force acting on the surface arbitrarily or making some arbitrary angle so i resolve it into uh, components which are perpendicular to this plane and parallel to this plane so for doing that what i do what i need is uh i need to find out uh, what is uh, uh this force delta f uh, is making angle with z axis okay uh, which is nothing but uh, per perpendicular to this surface okay so 
I can find out the components uh, of this force along z axis as delta f cos theta and one component on this plane uh, which is delta f sin theta. Now I would further resolve this uh, component which is lying on this plane uh, into components along x and y direction. Okay, So I have defined this uh, sigma t which is sigma perpendicular as uh, limit delta i tends to 0 delta f cos theta which is this uh, component upon delta a. Okay. This is what the stress of state at point O uh, along uh, when I define the uh, component of stress along z axis. Okay. Now uh, to find out components along x and y I make and I this delta f sin theta is making an angle of phi with y axis so I can find out components along x and y uh, and I resolve it in this fashion. Okay. So this component along x will be delta f sin theta sin phi whereas component along y direction will be delta f sin theta cos phi. So you have two parallel components or the components parallel to the surface as a component along y direction and I define uh, the state of stress at point as limit delta i tends to 0 delta f sin theta cos phi upon delta a whereas uh, along x direction is like limit delta a tends to 0 delta f sin theta sin phi upon delta a. So we have two parallel components and we have one perpendicular component. Okay. So this perpendicular component of stress is called as a normal stress. Okay. Whereas the parallel uh, component is called as shear stress. So the perpendicular component uh, perpendicular to what? Perpendicular to this area which I have mentioned. Okay. Area of in or plane of interest. Okay. Uh, at point O. This is called as a normal stress. And parallel component uh, parallel to what? Parallel to this plane. Which, uh, which is uh, of interest. Okay, so this is uh, a shear stress. Okay, so this nor uh, normal stress or perpendicular component causes compression or extension of the sample, whereas this shear stresses causes distortion of shape. Okay, so what is how is that? So let's say I have this. Uh, 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 shape and I apply a shear stresses that is shear stresses parallel to the surface of this so it get distorted in this fashion okay so this causes a distortion of shape shear stresses causes a distortion of shape so this uh, parallel component of stress is also represented by a symbol tau okay the shear stresses are represented by a symbol tau so uh, you can see that this is uh, this was my uh, plane of interest and uh, if I change this plane of interest in some other way uh, definitely the normal and shear stresses are going to change with surface orientation or change in the coordinate axis. So uh, to define a state of stress at a point completely uh, we need uh, um, more uh, planes to define. Okay. Uh, more components on other planes to be defined. So we'll see it in our upcoming uh, uh, part of this lecture.